different perspectives, same passion. Welcome to the Coach and the Couch Potato Podcast. What is going on, everybody? And welcome to a very special episode 15, probably the funnest episode that we have done yet. As always, I am the Couch Potato, Jeremy. Screen looks a little different, so in the middle of the day, we got Coach Slate. On the far right, we are extremely, extremely grateful to have Jake Burns. We uh, are going to do something cool today. Um, the, the premise for this episode, and this is why you know we were able to, to hustle Jake into coming on with us, is we're going to do a Buckeye draft. Uh, we'll get more into that in a little bit, but uh, we'll start with Coach Slate. How was your week, man? Uh, man, it was, uh, it was a pretty... Pretty uh, eventful uh, week. Um, you know, we typically do shout outs at the end, but I wanted to give a quick one to uh, to Finley High School staff and students and the first responders in Finley, Ohio. Uh, we had a swatting incident. Um, and for those who don't know, that's when a, a threat is made uh, to the school. And, you know, the, the police and the teachers and the admin, everybody took it so serious. And, you know, we underestimate how powerful these young people are. Um, we have some of the most resilient students ever who were willing to step up and do whatever it took to, to keep their classmates and their teachers safe. We had teachers who were willing to do whatever it took to, to keep the students safe. And then we had an awesome response from the first responders coming into school and, and really check, literally checking every nook and cranny of the building to make sure that there was no real threat. So just want to give a quick shout out, man. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was scary. It was, it, it was insane, but we've got some pretty resilient young people out there, man. And so I know this generation of young people gets a bad rap sometimes, but I just saw a group of kids willing to do whatever it took to, to keep their classmates safe. And to me, like that's, that's bigger than any test score that they're ever going to get. So, man, I, I, that's what I wanted to start out with. So shout out to the Finley High School staff, students, you know, we uh, first responders, we really appreciate everything you guys did. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's that's a real life test. And like you said, that's more important than any any grade book grade. Um, yeah. You know, we'll take a second, let Jake kind of introduce himself to our listeners that may not know who he is and uh, realize why we're so happy to have him. <laughs> yeah, I uh, well, listen, you guys didn't have to twist my arm. I, I think I was part of like pushing you guys in the right direction to do this. Um <laughs> Yeah, I cover the Browns for a living. I'm a Marion guy, so that's the connection to cover the Browns for a living and uh, um, talk with talk with Jared all the time about the Browns and you know get into Ohio State stuff and and uh, everything in between. So when the when the idea kind of spawned from, I think it, I, I did an episode on my podcast. Uh, we we did one like a little bit of like drafting out some guys um, through. I mean, I've done this over the years too. It's just a fun exercise to go through the history of your either organization or program and have some fun talking about players that have played there and try to formulate the best team. So I think it's a great idea. I'm pumped to be here, man. I, I, but if you're, if you're ever interested in Brown's content, we do some stuff at the orange and Brown report and I do a film breakdown podcast that you can find that too. If you're up to torture yourself in some pro football, <laughs> we, we do that every day. So that's uh that's it, but I'm happy to be here, man. Pumped. You guys are doing a great job on the pod and, and uh, it's a, it's a, it's an honor to be here for real. No, uh, we yeah, appreciate it. An man. awesome. Uh, Jake's been an awesome tool for us as we go through this, you know, bounce some stuff off of him, get some tech support stuff. Um, and yeah, like you said, you know, give him a listen. Um, you know, we're both Browns fans. As soon as I posted that you were going to be on, I swear within three minutes, I got a text that said, please, dear God, give me four to five minutes of Browns talk. <laughs> so, so before we dive into the Buckeyes, I'm going to put you guys both on the spot. Do Browns it. do not have a first round pick, obviously. Where are we going with their first pick on Friday? Jerry, go ahead, man. What do you think? <laughs> man, you know, I've got – because we don't have a lot of draft capital, I, there, there are so many ideas, you know, whether it's trading down or, you know, stacking picks together to try to move up. You know, I think they need to address a few things. One of the things to me is I still think there needs to be another piece at receiver. I don't know, you know, whether it's Keon Coleman, whether it's Lad McConkey. You know, I'm a big Lad McConkey fan. I'm just going to be very honest about that. I, I think that is where my mind goes. I can't believe I'm saying that as a defensive guy, but I do think there needs to be one more piece to that receiver room. Um, and so that's where that's where my mind goes. But if you take somebody on the defensive line, you know, that makes sense too. Like, 
I don't think the Browns are, I don't know if they can really like mess this up <laughs> oh because our roster is really set. Uh, <laughs> I really do. I, I just think our roster is really freaking good. Like I don't, yeah. And, and so, like, if you're if you want to add depth at a certain spot, you know, go ahead and do that. But I would lean the the receiver way. It's a great. It's a great. I mean, you made a danger sentence in there, but it I is know. a great answer. <laughs> they are at a spot where they're finally like not pressing on rookies to need to come in and have an impact, yeah. right? So, like, having a roster that's that's sort of baked in, ready to go, and you're doing what guys like Andrew Barry, who learned from Howie Roseman in Philly, they want to draft a year out, right? Like Belichick was on with. McAfee the other day made a great point about like we don't even evaluate rookies until they're in the middle of year two and that's what you would like to do instead of putting this immense amount of pressure on guys in the first year to come in and contribute and fill holes so they deserve a ton of kudos for like figuring that out right we don't need you to be a drafted rookie you can be a you know Martin Emerson and come in and win a job we love that yeah. for you we, we would love that but you're not forced to be on the field so um my answer is way worse than yours, which is like they're in a spot where they can finally look at premium positions and the best player available. So yeah. if Ladd or Keon or guys like that are there at wide receiver, yeah, let's run it. But if there's not a guy that they don't, you know, they don't have to force a receiver in a way in yeah. years past that they maybe felt they needed to reach up and grab somebody to provide depth. They don't, they don't really need that. They could even be patient and wait into the next round, next year, the first round. Every year, you guys know this, man. Like, the way seven on sevens go at such a young age, every year there's wide receivers in the NFL draft nowadays. Like yeah, it is the position is. that will just continue to be chock full of guys who are ready to come in and play because they've been doing it at a relatively advanced level since a young age. So, like, yeah, I mean, a wide receiver is a great draft for wide receivers, but if one's not there, they won't force that. But if the right one is there, say, like you mentioned, Lad, there's some other guys in this in this class that I really like, like Troy Franklin from Oregon could be there that they like. Like, there's some guys they could take, but I kind of think the undercard is two positions I think that are worth considering linebacker. There's some guys that they could like at 54 if they don't want to move around at all and they have to kind of sit there. Maybe they don't get an offer. The Edron Cooper kid from Texas A&M is really fun. And then I know we don't like to talk about Michigan kids on this pod especially, but Junior Colson can flat out play. So like his dog. There's, there's some guys that linebacker can be a mesh spot, but I really am drawn to offensive tackle too because you look a year in advance – there's a whole bunch of murkiness around that. They're lucky enough to get Dewan Jones last year. Yep. Uh, this podcast and the people familiar with it, and especially know how how talented Dewan is and has worked out in the first year. But you know, Jedrick Wills is on the last year of his, his rookie contract. Jack Jack Conklin's an aging veteran who's on the last year of his deal. And if you're looking a year out, finding somebody to be able to be a tackle for you with a year like buffer here, where he doesn't have to be forced to get on the field, is is probably a great outcome. So. Uh, I would say the highest likelihood here is that they're going to trade back a little bit, try to accumulate another couple assets, but um, the premium positions, D-line, um, uh, wide receiver, uh, are, are definitely in play, and then offensive line sneaks into play there, and then the one non-premium position I think that they could flirt with is is a linebacker. They'll take a running back somewhere. I don't yeah. know who. I know they love Audric Estime, the Notre Dame kid that we all know okay. we watched last year, but uh, um we'll see we'll see what shakes out but you, your, your overall prevailing point at the beginning is is the fact like they don't need somebody to do it this year they can draft and kind of keep a, a sort of little like winking eye on the next year uh, yeah can this guy fill a role because the 2025 browns have a chance to look wildly different because there's a lot of guys up for contract so it's a big year for a lot of players on the roster yeah yeah, there's and and we talked about uh you were just you brought up us not liking the team up north a little bit. Uh listen, when it comes to Buckeyes, yeah, I don't like the team up north, but when it comes to NFL, if the team up north has some dudes, I will gladly mm -hmm. take them. And I think between Sandersill or however you say his last name and, and yeah. Zach Zenter, you know, those are guys that I would have my eye on as uh as Browns fans because I think you know they have those are two spots where they don't need to be counted on right away, but they could develop into some absolute studs for us down the road i'm a huge saner still guy i mean i'm talking yeah. like that's going to be a 10-year nfl nickel there's not a doubt oh in my, my mind gosh. like yeah he's going to be a dude and then a guy that is probably most popularly mocked to the browns at 54 is chris jenkins the uh defensive tackle um pretty good too. is pretty good he's you know he's a flawed pass rusher but he can certainly play the run and if they think they can unleash him a little bit and jim schwartz theory of like just go create havoc one gap it and get up field um there's a chance he could be a little bit better than he was as far as a production standpoint in Michigan, but yeah, they got, you know, you don't win a national championship without having some guys, man. And they have yeah. some guys and those guys will be there. Uh, Roman Wilson will be there in the second round. If they love him, I don't know. I don't have a gauge on that, but yeah, there'll be, there'll be plenty of people quite interested in those guys up North. It's going to be a fun weekend for sure. I mean, on off fronts, yeah. I mean, 
Dra- draft time is, you know, most people's favorite, you know, aside from, you know, actual games. So, well, I was talking um, to my a, a buddy of mine the other day on the show. Like, I vividly remember being in high school in on Forest Lawn. Sup, shout out Forest Lawn, and <laughs> sitting down on the Saturday draft. It was all day, just one day of draft. Yeah, and just notebook and picks, man. Just notebook and picks until I got bored with it into like the fourth round. But those were like the days back when it was one single day of a draft. It was just yeah. like this special weekend that you could get. I, I wish I was uh I wish I was a little older when those were still one days because I would like to know like the feeling of being like, you know, an adult and what does that structure feel like? Because we were young, you know, we didn't young back in those days. It switched in 2010, is what the yeah. was what I was looking at the other day. It was kind of around the um Julio Jones draft, if you want to bring back some bad memories to yourself, it was a year year before that. But uh, yeah, that's that's when the sw- I don't I don't even recall it being that big a deal. I vividly remember it being a one day thing, and it was really cool. And then I I don't recall because probably because you know back then 2010 we're in college, we don't yeah. really care all too much about the structure of stuff. But I just think it'd be fun if they did that one year again. Just do it all on a Saturday. Just let people like let let the dads kick their feet up just hang out and just have like an like a like an 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. draft Saturday like it's the masters final round you know like that's what yeah. we need again one time absolutely <clears throat> like heck yeah <laughs> well you know we're gonna get a, a much smaller version of that going here in a minute um so just kind of the breakdown of what we did and how we're gonna do it I put our names alphabetical order rolled a dice on random.org I think the number was seven randomized it so the draft order and we're doing a snake draft coach slater's going first i've got the second pick and jake got the third pick uh roster breakdown we're going to do two quarterbacks two running backs three receivers a tight end three offensive linemen three defensive linemen two linebackers three dbs and then our last pick there is no rule whoever it doesn't have to fall into a, if you want to take Mike Nugent with your last bad, pick, actually, you know, yeah. you know, I, and I thought about throwing the wild card in there right off the roof, just be like, you know what, we're going to take a kicker and a punter last, but you know, Cam Johnson, Mike Nugent. Um, and then as far as longevity wise rosters from 95 to now are who are in play. So, um, Steer clear of the hop along, hop along Cassidy's of the world. We're yeah, just clear. Yeah, no disrespect. You know, no disrespect. No disrespect. We All were right, trying to make sure that it was in our lifetime and when we were actually able to enjoy Buckeye football. So no disrespect sorry, to anybody. Um, yes. So I should you know, know, don't yell at us. One clarification point: a guy just has to have played in '95, right? So like Eddie George, for example. Is 92 if he was and on five. their roster yeah. at 95, All he right. is yep. old. Got it. Uh, not, not giving anything so away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, Slater, you are on the clock. Okay, well, you know, I've got to make sure I've got this ready to go and fired up. My man has um, a whole Google Doc, y'all. That's what he's looking at. I'd be um, disappointed if he didn't have a Google Doc. I've got a Google Doc, but I've also got this because the pick is in. Pick is in. Let's see. Orlando Pace. There is no other pick that could be number one as an offensive lineman to get invited to New York. I've got a picture of him as my background right now because it just was re- reminded me of how great he was. He's eating pancakes, right? Yes. This dude, absolute freaking monster. And I've got my draft strategy, and my team name is the Buckeye Grove Silver Bullet, so we know that, right? Yep. And we are, I'm a defensive coach, so we're going to ground and pound, and you cannot start that without the greatest offensive lineman of all time. Two-time All-American. Yes. Unanimous. Two-time. Oh. Two-time. Sandusky's, uh, Sandusky's. Well, name. you know, there's only one way to go since you went with Orlando. <laughs> you know, you already know exactly where this is going. I know um, where it's going. You, you, you look at the username right there in the corner. Oh, you, know, you, <laughs> you, you might have Orlando to guard him, but I am taking Eddie George. 
Uh, you know, oh. soul crushing. It was going to be the face of my <laughs> franchise. You know, <laughs> just like you said, you know, you got to run the rock. Yep. Um, you know, with as many great guys as we've had at that position. But when you look at the depth that you can add everywhere else on this team, you know, I feel like running back and this might get me crucified. It, it's Eddie. And then there's a massive drop off. So that's why I'm going with Eddie. I don't, I mean, I, I think it's very fair. He was a freaking monster. He all was right. all right. Yeah, he wasn't bad. Um, he wasn't bad. He was okay. He was okay. All he right. was okay. So, uh, Eddie I, is I get off the, the board. He's off the board. I, I think that, like, there's some guys who stand out above everybody else at some of these positions. And, like, but there's also, it's a credit to Ohio State that, like, you know, Maybe you don't take Joey Bosa or Nick Bosa, but it's not that far off. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah, there's yeah. quite obviously some good answers across the board. I'm going to surprise you guys probably a little bit, but probably not um, based on how some people view all of this stuff. But uh, the first guy I'm going to take is not a premium position, but is is just, I mean, is Buckeye lore as it should be. He's a three-time All-American, guys. Came back to get it done a senior year and uh, is probably the ultimate alpha. I'm going to take Mike Doss. Okay, so I don't think you can go wrong with that pick. Probably you can't. one of the, probably one of the uh, like I said, we're not doing this like to build out an NFL team in any way. So I don't really care what position they play all too much. You're just trying to find the best of the best when they were there. And I think he he checks a lot of boxes. And then the other one that I think I would take that again is a little um off the beaten path, but I'm talking about unique versatility in a way that uh, not many guys have really been able to put together and like we love Travis Hunter. Yeah. Right. And this, this idea that you can play both sides of the football, but I'm getting the, the, the ultimate wild card here and I'm taking Chris Gamble. I can't, I'm, I'm doing you. it. I'm doing it right here because I know one of you two are smart enough to get that. I mean, he doesn't, I don't know that he made any all American teams, uh, but, but I, but I do know that like, it was harder to find a better football player to come through Ohio State. Just collectively, a better yeah, overall so football good. player. So, he was um, so good, so talented, and and for, I I think people underestimate the time that we got him too, coming from Florida to yeah. get him to, come to Ohio State during the Trestle era. You know what I mean? Like that was not an easy thing to do. So, it's a great pick. I'm I'm actually kind of upset. I might I'm hurt. My my heart is broken. I'm building no, secondary to stop the passing game. Board. Okay. Oh. So where do we want to All list right. him for roster breakdown though? Um, by virtue of like what he, I thought he was best at in his NFL career kind of speak to, he's probably a corner, yeah. but yeah. you know, I have Liberty here when we get these teams onto the field in a couple months and in, in college football 25 that I, yeah, oh, there we go. My, uh, when we put some Twitch streams up the, of our rosters here, <laughs> when we create, when we create players, I don't know if the EA sports will let us create players, but we'll see what they let us do. We'll but, see. I'm just saying this draft isn't over when it's over today. It's just yeah. saying. <laughs> right. Oh, there's there's so no, we'll, we'll list him as a corner because I agree. Um, and that you know, I didn't lit rank my big board, but he was very, very high, and I'm pretty sure Slater was about to take him. So I could yep. see that yeah, we, we have two steals already. You stole Eddie from me, and and uh, I took I took Gamble from, from Slate. So yeah, we're good, we're good here. We're off to a hot start. Off to a hot start. All right, Jeremy, you're back up, right? No, you are. I am? Yeah. Okay. All right. Right. It is so, me. Right. It, it, right. Yeah, it is you. Yep. Yeah. Yep, it is you. Well, you know, since you are the defensive guy, I feel like I'm going to try to just build the offensive powerhouse. So Don't you, do it. Don't you freaking do it. I He's like am going to, to have to go with wide receiver one. A man who is probably going to be catching passes from Kyler Murray soon. <laughs> and we are going to take Marvin Harrison Jr. Okay. Okay. All right. That's a great, that's a great pick. That's a, that is a great pick. So you got Marv. I'm keeping tabs here. Okay. I'm trying to write these out. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying to write these I, out. It's going to get tough in about 20 minutes. It's going to get yeah. tough. Let me make sure I have strike out Marvin Harrison Jr. off my big board. Uh, I got to get Gamble off here too. I had him like highlighted in yellow because I, I that was my guy. Like that's who yeah. I was going after. He fit your guardrails, huh? He did. Yeah. He, he yeah. fit all of my guardrails. 
All right. So it's back to me. I'm sticking to the game plan. You know, I said we were going to be the 2000 Ravens. All right. So, and you can't, you cannot be a smash mouth team without a good sound offensive line. So I'm going to stay there. I'm going to stay on the offensive line and I'm going to go with Charles Bentley right here. Such a sad, so you're, such a sad one for me, but yes. So you're yeah. talking the Charles Bentley and Orlando Pace. I mean, I, it doesn't matter. I, you know, I may draft Demario McCall with my last pick, so he could get back to carrying a rock in the backfield. <laughs> All right, you are up again. Oh, it's me again. Okay. All right. Now, this is where we have to make sure we stay locked in on who we are. What's our identity? We're going to get back to running the football. I know Ryan Day wants to spin it a little bit. But we've got these guys up front. Now it's time for me to get my running back. And I'm going to go with Maurice Claret. That's a choice. I, that that's a choice. a choice. That is a choice. God, he was that fun. That, he, year, that, was, that year was magical. I, I it was, it. man. It was. I, I wish things would have er went differently for him. Him and Reggie Bush are like the ultimate uh, played wrong time. Yes, guys. Absolutely. Yes. Think about how much absolutely. money that dude could have made in NIL. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Sickening. Sickening. That... All right. Well, you know, just like you said, we're gonna stick to our identity, and I feel like we're kind of cherry picking where we feel like there are those maybe tier positions. Um, you know, I told you I want to see how many points we can score a game. Um, you know, I, I've got Marv who can kind of do it all. I need somebody to take the top off the defense. And who better than Theodore Ginn Jr.? I, I literally hate you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm so disappointed. I thought we were friends. I, look, we're, we're trying to I'm average. You know, Ryan Day couldn't hang 100 on the team up north. I'm yeah. trying to hang 100 on the team up north. Gosh, man. Oh, I okay. Respect it. I respect that it. is great. Could you imagine a world where those two would have been on the same team? Marv and, and Teddy? Oh, Freaking that's, dangerous. Uh, that's scary. I just know I've never seen a more exciting. I mean, I, I think I say it once a year on Twitter comes up, but I've never seen a more exciting. I don't know if there's the time of my life when that was happening, being in high school at the same time or whatever. Like, I was like, that guy is like a god on a football field like the way he re-races angles and i will never have seen like a guy who gets me more excited about ohio state football than ted Ginn, man they, they yeah he played special. corner too because yeah. he played. came in as a corner i remember i had yeah. this yeah I, I i the first year i ever this is a random anecdote but the random i the first year i ever bought phil Steele's college preview magazine it was my yeah it was it was the year he came out i had taken like a i was on a trip to canada with some buddies some pleasant guys right and uh um, I didn't know, like, I was like, I'll just buy this magazine. It's this, this looks like it's got a ton of information and it's like become a Bible for me every, I'm so excited to get it every year, even though, you know, it's hard to read it front to back the way you used to because of, uh, you know, little gremlins running around the house, but like, yeah. it's, um, I just remember I'm like, Oh, they got this really good corner named Ted Ginn. I was like, okay. Cause back then, you know, we weren't jumping on rivals or whatever and no checking recruiting rankings. So like that, that, that's just something I vividly, very vividly remember. It's like reading that whole magazine on this trip to remote Canada, living out in the woods, just reading this thing when downtime. And I was like, Ted Ginn, all right, I think he might be pretty good. And then it's like, Oh, he's a wide receiver. Oh, okay. He can do this, yeah. that. So he's, that's a fun memory. All right, so it is to you for two picks, sir. I guess it's whether you want to draft Roy Hall to break his ankle again or not. That's the <laughs> question. Um, what a sad day. What a sad oh, moment. Man. You talk about history. riding the high of highs. Oh, my god! They're about to beat the brakes off Florida, and then it's like, oh, okay. Yep. That's not going to happen. I was sitting in this room with some of Slater's classmates, um, <laughs> and that happened. And, I mean, it was literally like the – Biggest buzz kill I've ever experienced in my life. So when at, at Urbana, it was it was pretty cool. Like in our apartment, we had all these Buckeye fans, and then 
Urbana was like a hub for like people from South Florida. Like it was just mm-hmm. like a thing. So we had, we had everybody in Florida in the hallway across from us. And when that opening kickoff happened, we all got up, ran across the hall. We were talking reckless to these oh, dudes, God, yeah, like reckless. And then the rest of the game, they just, it was just, it was sad. Like I, there were a few of us that were ready to fight by the end of the yeah. game because it was just like, dang, like we, thought we had him that was i was just a senior then so like that was that was uh that was just like i i thought that these guys were infallible like i didn't think anybody could play with them and it's like i didn't i, can't, I couldn't and that was heartbreaking oh the sec might be okay i guess is what yeah. we have to come conclude, conclude with all right i'm listen i'm going on the flip side of you guys i see what i see what we have going on with the ted gan and the mark i'm building out defense boys i'm building this thing you wouldn't think i would but i'm building through defense Okay. And I'm taking and I'm taking dogs. I'm talking Malcolm Jenkins. All right. <laughs> I'm getting a guy that can play corner at the college level and unbelievable safety at the NFL level, even though we don't consider that. But I mean, again, Dawson and, J- and Jenkins in your secondary with Gamble. I mean, we're cooking with grease. And then I want a second level dominator. I went through a lot of different avenues thinking about this. Do I want Big Cat? Do I want? Uh, I'm just going to go with Mr. Consistent James Laurinaitis. So I'm going like. Solid. I'm, I'm I'm flat out building through, and I know I know I'm ignoring the trenches on both sides. We'll get there. Solid. We'll get there. But I I want guys who can stop some of this this uh, ridiculous speed in these running games, you guys, because you slate's building out the offensive line. I need guys at the second level who can get past people and make plays. So mark down, uh, Mister uh, Malcolm Jenkins is gone, and then James Laurinaitis as well. Okay. Very solid. Very solid. So your so your your DBs are done. I'm Jay. done. I got one You're linebacker done. and two D and three DBs now. So yeah, there we go. What a what a what a haul you have in that freaking secondary. Right. I now. think one like we're attacking what no one else is attacking, and then we have all these strengths, and then we're going to start yeah. meshing the pool of guys underneath that, and that's going to get yeah. real, real fun. It, yeah. th- this is going to be one on depth. Um. So, you know. I've got the running back. I've got two receivers. I am going to dig into the trenches a little bit. Okay. And, uh, you know, obviously Orlando and, and LaCharles are are both probably arguably, you know, Orlando obviously is, is one far and above. And then LaCharles is probably either 2A or 2B with uh, the bearded one himself. Oh. We are going to go with Nick Mangold to good head pick. up the O line. It's a good uh, pick. It's a great pick. You know, that's a, he, good, that's a good pick. I say, Nick he, Mangold, what's your memory? Any one play come to mind for you guys? I honestly no, not for me. I remember I mean, the screen. Me, go ahead, you have it. Give it. No, give it to me if you have it. My mine is all literally just consistency. I remember there was an end around in that Notre Dame Fiesta Bowl where he's out in front, like just run trucking down the left sideline. Like I'm like, why is he able to run like that? This is a center. How is this running like this? Yeah, I remember that when I'm like, okay, Nick Mangold is going to be just fine. He's he's going to test well. And he's going to be fine. His sister was a A freak power lifter. Yeah, she could have played. She could have been a pulling guard. Just saying, easily. Yep. So easily now we need to kind of start piecing in some some ballers. Um, we're gonna go to the secondary and we're gonna go old school here, and we are gonna go with Sean Springs. We gotta have somebody to cover the guys. Sean Sean Springs. He was on what the heck? The, let what me the make, heck? He was on one of the rosters I looked at. Yeah, he's a 96 all American. He's 96 guy. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. It's a sad day. You guys are just taking all my my sleepers here. We already took pictures of your big board, dude. That's why all <laughs> Yeah, I had Aaron send them to me. I'm like, I need to know what Slate's up to. Yeah, there's a whole underground stealing operation. <laughs> Well, you guys football. took all my secondary, so it's okay. I, se- I text my mom and said, let me know when they go on a walk or anything. We'll make it <laughs> oh, man. Okay. All right. So I'm up, right? 
There's a yep. great secondary name still sitting there, boys. There's a, oh, there's a there's lot. A, there's a lot of secondary guys. But I'm saying a great one uh, around fan, that time. I, there is a great one. And he's arguably my oh. favorite black guy ever. But he's about your same height. He is about my same height. But I'm not. I'm staying with the offense, guys. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm staying with the offense. Who no, are no, you? no quarterbacks off the board right now either. Not one quarterback off the board. Okay. So this is this is where I'm going right now. Okay. I got Orlando. I got LaCharles. I got Mo Claret. We see it this year with Travion Henderson and, and Quinshawn. We got to have two guys. You know, the, the college landscape has changed. 16, 17 games is a possibility. I'm going with Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, that's a good pick. That's the guy I would have taken if I didn't want to go defense to combat you guys. I Listen. I got another guy in that realm that's, just, but like Zeke was, spe- I mean, you know, the player was special. Like never, it was unreal. You know, I, yeah, again, being like, like being fully a recognized adult watching him play, I'd imagine that's what it was like as an adult watching Eddie go through the through his time. But like, never got caught from behind. Like he just like had this open field like gracefulness and yeah, just a special football player, man. He was extremely special. All right, am I still up? How many does yeah. everybody have right now? That was my fourth. Okay, so I have four. How many do you have? I have Jer- five because I was Jeremy's sure. got five. Okay. Right. So then Wait. you'll so you should hold on, Jeremy. Jeremy you I think Jeremy me. took two. I think he took two. Well, we're gonna have to skip him on the next Sean, run. Through. Sean Springs is gone. No, Sean wow. Springs is back on the board. Wow. No, you keep Springs. We'll just we'll just jump to no, Jeremy. just just keep yeah, springs. Yeah, keep Springs. He's All already right. he's already so, put the yeah. hat on on the stage and everything. So can't I, walk that back. I see what you did. Since this was your idea with the podcast, you thought, you know, I could just go ahead and take an extra guy right here. Okay. Yeah. I right. honestly got, Compen- you know, distracted pick. for a minute. I saw a squirrel <laughs> or something. Compensatory yeah, that was a compensatory pick for oh uh, my God. mental anguish. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Understand. Okay. So am I, st- am I still yes, up? Yes, you're yeah, still you- up. Then I get skipped and then Jake for two. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hold on a second. I gotta I gotta double check some some time frame here. Nope. Dang. Okay. <laughs> can't can't go there. Okay, so can't I've stayed stringer. Damn. I know. <laughs> so let's see. Look at my board. Okay. I'm not ready to go quarterback yet. I'm not there yet. I think the guy that I want running the show will still be there. Yeah. Oh, but will he? Actually, I think I might know who you are. Uh, okay. All right. So I really want to round out my offensive line. I really do. I think there are some good names. Unknown name out there is Rob Murphy. He was All-American, 95, 96. And Very good player. He's 97. 97. Yeah. It's fantastic. He's in the CFL Hall of Fame. Had a great career. I'm thinking of Brent Johnson. Sorry. That's who's in the CFL, the defensive end. Uh, but Rob Murphy had a great career. Um, we are going to go with Paris Johnson. Yeah, great choice. Offensive line is solidified. I was back and forth between him and Decker, but mm-hmm. we'll go with our guy, Paris. Decker just didn't report eligible to be drafted. <laughs> All right, so I'm skipped. Yeah, so I have to take um, – I mean, you know, I've watched you build out offensive line. There's really not a ton of, like, great, great answers here. It's probably one guy. I don't know that I need to force that one, so I'm not going to go that route. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and, and take a wide receiver. Okay. And, uh, you know, if it's not – if we're not talking like Ted Ginn, we're talking a little before Ted Ginn's time. Just throwing haymakers. I'm going to take David Boston, just the absolute bicep maniac that will rip your head off if he has to. And um, great, God, pick. he was he was so fun. I we did not drug so test fun. in the uh, hypothetical yeah. Ohio State draft league, so yeah. we are good to go. We encourage David Boston to grow those. Uh, yes, get the gun his, show. His welcome. You know what I? So '97 was the year that I really started paying attention to Buckeye football. Mm-hmm. The year that they beat um, Arizona State, Jake the Snake, like that was a big deal, right? 
when David Boston walks into the end zone with that game winning touchdown, I thought, yeah, that strut, I thought that was like the most gangster thing I'd ever seen at that time. It like, was, dude. It was. It was just like, and then you think back to him and 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 Charles Woodson getting into it. The guy had no swag when it came to like how he dressed on the field. It was just straight biceps and no just gloves. Creative player. Yeah. Just but an God, what creative a, player. What an absolute monster he was. That's a great pick. He was a catch point menace, man. That guy yes, was, he was. He was so, and he was in the NFL too. He was. He had an, a, an all pro season that people forget about in the midst of like yeah. some of the struggles he had, you know, with uh, you know, mental health and all that. But uh, yeah, he was. A, he was an unbelievable football player. I, I'm with you, man. I remember that '97 game because it's funny. I relive it a little bit because I have a guy on on, on our show named Kyle Murphy. I, the weirdest of connections, man. Like Kyle. Is a, is a big Browns guy who's a UCLA guy who's got some connections to pods up in Cleveland. Well, his best friend growing up was the right guard on that team, that Arizona really? State team. So we get into the, the the like meat of that. He's like, dude, I was on the side. All of us thought the game was over. There's no way. Like, the yeah, he doesn't have a quarterback that can lead him down the field. He's like, they may get a deep kick, and then like they just couldn't couldn't fathom losing that game. And it was on the other day on on uh, the Big Ten Network for some, yeah. like no reason at all. And I'm like watching Jake Plummer's face change from the moment he scores to standing on the <laughs> sideline and then realizing like, Oh my God, these guys might score. That's um, it was just because people forget how good that Arizona state team was like that team could have won. If they win that game, they had a, a real argument chance to be the national champion that year. Yeah. They, they got left out of the, you know, the, I, I don't know if this is the last year before the BCS or was the first year of the BCS. They got left out. They were the one team left out of that whole ordeal. So I think it was the last year before the BCS. I think it was. Yeah. Um. All right. Good stuff. Good team so far. I mean, I, uh, I have David Boston now, a lot of modern receivers. I'd be more than fine with. I do need to get something, somebody leading this offensive line. So I will probably end up taking Rob Murphy, the two-time All-American. Good call. Um, just because Good I need call. somebody consistent. I feel like there's some tackles I can move around a little bit. But, yeah, I need I need a guy who's going to be – and, again, you, you mentioned it uh, earlier. That's just a name not many people know all too well because it was a guard yeah. playing in the late 90s. But the, those teams, the 97, 98 teams, man, like that. Town. I think the 98 Ohio State team, pound for pound, might be the best one to ever go through the university. Like – the Michigan State game is just an awful stain on the on the legacy of what it was. I, I mean, again, that was an just unbelievable football team. You look at the roster top to bottom, so it's a heartbreak that they didn't get one of those, any of those in the nineties, late nineties there. But yeah, that guy that guy was special. I mean, they just they they literally had everything that you needed on a team. I mean, it was yeah. just so they were just so talented, just so talented. And I think, you know, that's part of the reason why Coach Cooper gets a gets a bad rep. It's a, yeah, 98 was supposed to be it, and then Nick Saban and Plaxico Burris decided to have their yeah. their uh, their their Old day Plax. with them. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's such a bummer. You, well, yeah, it's such a bummer when you think about the team. What was that? The 15 team that was probably again pound for pound. I know the better uh, ones uh, ever. All Michigan, because we couldn't figure Michigan, out the yeah Michigan quarterback. State give the ball to the quarterback. quarterback. Yeah, ah, the Michigan State game. Yeah, Spartans have done it twice. They've done it twice. Yeah, that anyway. one was brutal. So I go, Robert. Right. I got one offensive lineman now. All right. All right. So with my sixth pick to get us back on track, that I'm not watching any squirrels. <laughs> um, you know, the O line. You're, you're definitely starting to get into some interesting names out there. So to make sure I only have to go with one of those, I'm going to take Taylor Decker. Good call. Uh, that was, and that was add good. him. Wafting between those two. Good pick. Add him with Nick Mangold. And so, yeah, that will take you to your sixth Slater. Okay. All right. So I built up the trenches on the offensive side of the ball. Now it's time for me to flip over to the defensive side. All right. I'm a big, you know, a lot of the listeners know that I played nose guard in high school at 175 pounds. All right. So I have a lot of respect for the interior defensive line. And so this guy for me is one of my favorite Buckeyes of all time. I can't, I can't think of a guy who's like worsely built, but was just a fantastic freaking football player. And that is big Jonathan Hankins. This dude was the sloppiest looking dude I've ever seen on the field, but gosh, he could just freaking plug up the a gap. 
And that is what we need. I was torn between him and Ryan Pickett. I guess I could probably, because I'm up again, so I could probably take that too. There you go. Yeah. So, all right. So, Big Hank, that's who I'm going to go with. My second, my second pick. Um, I don't think, I don't know if we really give this guy enough respect when it comes to how great he was as a Buckeye. Um, I think it just gets overlooked. You know, he is now on the Browns coaching staff since we've got a Browns insider up here on the pod. So I'm going to go with Coach Vrabel. I loved watching him play. He was one of my dad's favorite players. I truly would want him to follow me into a bar if I was ever going to get into a fight. Um, This guy is a physically imposing human being. And I met him at the coach's clinic, the first clinic I ever went to. When he shook my hand, I thought like my hand was about to break. Like between him and Luke Fickle, it was there was a lot of intimidation going on. So I'm going to go with Coach uh, Coach Mike Vrabel with my second pick there. Great pick. It's a definition awesome. of build different. That guy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, Vrabel was where I was going to go. Ah. Um. So you got me there. So we're going to go D line and we are going to try to get after the quarterback. And I don't think it could be any better than uh, Joey Bosa. Good call. Good call. Thinking back to his recruitment, man, like just the, the when we got him, like that idea of having that kid from St. Thomas Aquinas. Like you remember how big of a deal that was? Oh yeah. Like I just, yeah. you know, that was, that was huge. And then knowing, you know, his brother was likely going to be coming to that pipeline as well. Like shout out to coach Johnson for getting that done. And man. the bloodline that those kids brought. And just, yeah. yeah. I mean, those, those were big wins, huge wins. Yeah, that that seemed like it opened. I mean, Ohio State's always recruited Florida well, but that was yeah. like, oh, okay, they're going to bring these guys up now. All right, that's yeah. different because that's when Urban came over and let, like, because I I remember going, I watched, you know, I don't know, this is probably like 2019. I, I sat down with Doug Maurice from Cleveland.com and we did the rewatch of the Ohio State Michigan one two oh six yeah. game, and yeah. I'm like, ninety percent of these are Ohio kids. And yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, and then Urban shows up you know, and whatever, 12. And it's like, they just start recruiting globally. Yeah. Like it's yeah. just completely different than what yeah. it used to be. So yeah, good. That's a, you mean, you can't go wrong with either of those guys, man. You can't go wrong. No period. Uh, is Nate Stead still on the board or did anybody take him? I can't, <laughs> Nate I can't Stead is still available. All right. I got him or my utility in the back pocket. I got to uh, get some options here, boys. Um, All right. So let's see. I am going to lean into defensive line as well. Um, a torn a little bit between which one of these guys in the same era I would take. I'll just take the, the uh, his brother, um, who you know we know is it's pretty pretty good football player. Pretty pretty so, good. Um, don't ask him to do quantum physics, but we will just ask him to chase the quarterback. Go get the and um, the he's pretty he's pretty talented at that. See ball, get ball. See ball, get ball, young man. Don't want to hear you say much. Um. <laughs> and then I'm just going to take my guy I want at quarterback. I'm just going to break the seal. I'm just okay. going to break the seal. And this was probably pretty controversial to some people. I don't really care. But the best quarterback I feel like I've sat at Ohio State and watched, not about a professional career, but I'm going to take Justin Fields. I think he's the best collegiate quarterback I have seen at Ohio State because he could do both. And he wasn't where CJ is obviously an NFL, like, you know, God, he's everything you want. But CJ, I think we could all agree, was like trying to figure out when to use his. He was just very complicated about how to gain cheap yards, use Absolutely. the legs, and all of that stuff. And he's a very gifted player. But as far as like just, I sat down and consumed a player at Ohio State. Justin Fields was like unbelievable college football player. So I will go with quarterback one as uh, Fields. That's a great pick. I that's, think that's a- I think a lot of the people get so frustrated with Stroud because you know against a Georgia against Georgia, like we saw exactly what he could do, and it's like, dude, like. You could yeah. have done that all the time, and if, yeah, yeah. If he did that, he'd know, be the, without it'd be unquestioned. It'd be unquestioned. Yeah, yeah. So excited okay, to watch great. him, man. Excited to Me watch too. him this year. Me too. Yeah, no doubt. Um, I am going to keep building on the D line. 
Good and um, this guy doesn't necessarily have like the flash to him, but you know, super, super, super solid college career. Probably a better NFL career. Cameron Hayward. Great pick. Talk Fantastic about a pick. dude who, A, could play all over the field, but just, you know, we use the word dog a lot, but that dude gave 110% all the time. Still is. Great pick. He still is. I absolutely I hate, hate facing that dude at the NFL. Yeah. Like, that is, it's awful. That's Joel Batonio. That's his answer. Yeah. Yeah. Time. <laughs> yeah. Great pick. Yeah, man. I remember some stories about him being able to just put it away at Ohio. Yeah. Just like very quiet, but just could just, you know, you're not out drinking that guy. That It's not happening. <laughs> All right. So I am I'm back up, correct? Yep. Yes, sir. OK, so we're going to go. We're going to stay on the defensive line. I went with I went with Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel. Obviously elite built different. You know, I need that's the mindset that we need to have, but we also need to have a little uh, a little flash as well. All right. And I'm thinking of a guy who had some yellow dreads, um, you know, had a nickname from a Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. And then that is Chase Young. Chase Young, to me, that season where he got invited to New York was unbelievable. Mm. And I think he set the bar so high for himself. That we're starting to see, you know, some of the shortcomings of what what he's got going on in the NFL. So he is somebody that I just have an immense respect for coming from the DC area. He's just freaking right. He's from the DC area, correct? He is, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a DMV yeah, guy. Right. Yeah. So I yeah, that's who I'm gonna go with. Chase Young. Defensive line for me is freaking set. I'm telling you, you guys are not we're in trouble. You're you're not you're not stopping this running game. No. I don't feel great about it. <laughs> I don't feel great about it. Chase Young yeah. is it. Okay. Now, this next pick, you know, since my guy. You have the top two sack guys of all time at the University. All time. Nice yep. Job. So, he broke the seal with, uh, with Justin Fields. And I feel like I got to get this guy on my team before somebody else snatches him up. I don't know if he's going to be our starter, but he's going to compete. He's going to compete at a high level. Um, Braxton Miller, in my opinion, is the reason why Urban Meyer came to Ohio State. Nobody will ever tell me any different. Yeah, The idea of him being able to coach that type of athleticism, that type of arm strength, those things like that, like he was so good, stuck with his commitment. You know, in 2011, you know, when it was uh you know what show um, sure. was on the team, uh, the six and seven team, you know, that throw against Wisconsin to to Devin Smith, just waiting to catch it like a pun against that was to 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 out duel Russell, you know, Wilson. Russell Wilson. Like that was a yeah. big deal. So the first quarterback for me off the board is going to be Braxton Miller. He'll play for you somewhere. I'll tell yep. you that. I could also tell you that you guys could tell me where you were in the Virginia Tech game because that was a pretty monumental this moment. It was in my dad. I was in the living. My parents' living room. Yeah. I, my dad Not and I room. like we didn't we didn't even say a word when it happened. We yep. were just like, wow. <laughs> it was yeah. it was pretty special. It's Braxton video, Miller. Here we go. Video game mode. That guy. Yeah, for sure. All right. Well, you know, you guys have started to beef up your D lines. So I need to finish off my O line to try to combat the the craziness that you guys are putting together. And you know there are some really intriguing names out there still. Um, you know you've got guys like Corey Lindsley, Andrew Norwell. You yep. know that have all like done really decent things in their life. But Michael Jordan, I, Wyatt Davis. Yeah, Wyatt Davis. You know my love for Wyatt Davis, mostly yeah. because of his father. But anyway, um, I am going to go to finish the offensive line. And again, I don't know why I, I've gravitated here. 
I, I really want to say Kirk Barton. I, I really want to go with Kirk Barton. You might be, but, I, think you, I think you might be banned from anything Ohio State. Yeah, I don't know. But, I don't know if you're going to be allowed to do that. I think when you when you factor in flexibility and all of that thing, you know, I am going to go with Thayer Munford. Hmm, good choice. That's a solid choice. That is a solid choice. I thought you were going to go with Big Thanos. That's that, what I. That's where. Yeah. That's that's where I thought you were going. Um, but great. That's a that's a solid choice. Great. He was a really good player for us. Really good player. I think that you know that last year here, him getting bumped inside for Thanos. Yeah. I think led to some interesting stuff happening that I don't know was for the best, but I get it. You don't want to lose a guy like DeWan Jones in this day and age. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So did you take Thayer or Dewan? I did, Thayer. Okay. Because I'll just be the Cleveland guy who goes that route then. Um so I'll take uh I'll take Dewan because I need another I need a tackle, right? I'm trying to get, you know, trying to get a tackle with these guys. So we'll go Dewan to make sure I get some sort of uh throwback. I mean, just mini Orlando. Um yeah. and then I'm actually stunned you guys let it get this far. And let me take him, and I'm just gonna take, um, I'm just gonna take AJ Hawk and cap off my linebacker room, and just call it a day, and just say I have James Lornitis and AJ Hawk in their prime. That and, that uh, is two time All American, you know, probably one of the coolest uh, Ohio State football players ever. Absolutely, yeah. the vapor cleats, man. I oh, thought dude, he yeah. was. Yeah, I actually cleats, just I actually ever. just wrote his name down too. So yep. thank you. I, I am holding off on one guy though, so uh, I'm hoping it gets back to me that uh, will work out. But anyway, uh, I have Justin Fields so, so far for me. Justin Fields, David Boston. Then I have a couple of linemen, Rob Murphy, just so we can keep everybody up because we're moving yep. quick. Uh, Rob Murphy, Dewan Jones on the offensive line. I have one defensive lineman so far. I don't have a tight end. None of us do so far. Um, uh, one defensive lineman, Nick Bosa. Two linebackers are done, and three DBs are done. I have Laurinaitis, AJ Hawk, Mike Doss, Chris Gamble, Malcolm Jenkins. I'm telling you, boys, that that linebacker DB group is going to be tough to move on. It's it's special. It's special. Um, for me, for me right now, I got Brax Miller at quarterback. Uh, my two running backs. I think I got the best running back group, and 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 Claret and Zeke um, up front. Orlando, big Orlando pace. The Charles Bentley, Paris Johnson, solid group. And then my defensive line is finished out with Big Hank, Mike Vrabel, and Chase Young. I got an idea where I'm going next. Hopefully it doesn't get picked, but we'll mm -hmm. see. All right. I uh, am just going to go ahead and finish my D line. Um, I need just, you know, kind of like how you said, Vrabel, a guy you would want on your side in a bar fight. Yeah. Um, you know, Vrabel had his boy when they played together okay. a dude that you would walk into a bar fight with. oh my gosh and i'm gonna take luke fickle it's a great it's a, choice all right my guy's safe choice. but that's a great choice that's a great choice i i really wanted to go michael bennett with my third d lineman because yeah. i love that dude yeah uh, michael bennett is I, pretty but i pretty good on the radio take, too yeah yeah and he's finishing his law degree yeah um, but i can't not take luke fickle with him sitting there Okay. All right. Okay. So now for me, I'm going to. Uh... You going to take any pass catchers or are you just going to be like playing the Cassidy era? What's your, what's your plan? <laughs> Three you yards know, and a cloud know, of dust. You know, you know the, the fun part of it is Chip Kelly kind of sparked and ignited <laughs> this fire for running the ball inside. So, but no, I'm not taking any pass catchers yet because it, got there are some, blood flowing. There, yeah. so much it's flowing. It's my, it was my four years at Pleasant, Jake. That's, That's what right, did man. it to me. Rubbed off on you. Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to stay on. We're going to go back to the defensive side. All right. My, my quarterback set for right now. Running backs are good. We're going to go back to the defensive side. Um, I need another physically imposing human being on my team all right and i think uh andy katzemoyer is going to be that guy for me i think you know we talk about cj hicks and how elite he has been this spring when it comes to blitzing i think i don't know if there was a better blitzing linebacker that ohio state's had other than andy katzemoyer that dude was yeah. phenomenal getting after the quarterback when he blitzed so we are going to go with the big cat andy katzemoyer my first linebacker off the board. If you were ranking like a top five 
coolest football players at Ohio State. He's fighting for number one. Like that dude, dude. with like the visor, the neck yeah. brace, yeah. like oh yeah. my everything man. about it. And you see him like I caught I've caught him a couple times just walking around Westerville where he's from, and he looks still he's still he's still, he's still oh, a dude he's still <laughs> scary yes yeah. all right okay and then let's see all right just took my first linebacker let me make sure i get that down big cat and then we're gonna go with you know i gotta stay on the defensive side okay so i got the defensive line set i got the anchor in my linebacker room and now we're going to go with the best tackling corner in football history, Antoine Winfield. Dog. Absolute freaking dog. So mad the Browns didn't draft a son, by the way. But Me too, I digress. <laughs> mad the Buckeyes didn't offer his son. I know. What the heck? How's yeah, he that's end up the, that's the bigger surprise. That's the bigger surprise. It's right? the size thing. I can't think yeah, of who the yeah. kid we took that year over him was, but it worked out for both. Yeah, it did. Um, I am going to go back to the secondary, um, you know, with the, all the wide receiver talent on the board still for you guys to pick. I'm going to have to be able to cover some guys. So we got Sean Springs. We're going to give him a running mate. And we are going with Marshawn Lattimore. Also a really good football player. Very uh, good yeah, football player. Yeah. Still is, by the way. Yeah. His highlight film coming out of high school, like, I, I he could have been another Chris Gamble. He could have yeah. he could have played both ways at an extremely high level. And, and him and Mike Evans in the league going at each other, like I mm-hmm. love it. That's a good pick. It's a good pick. It's a fantastic pick. Okay, I am going to go um, attack D line, um, but a guy that I think gets lost in the shuffle a little bit, but was an unbelievable football player around the time they won that no two. Will Smith. Will Smith. Um, rest, rest in, in peace, peace, man. Rest yes. in peace. Hopefully right, his dude. son gets a great experience in Columbus. Um, but boy, was he good. And he had a nice yeah. NFL career, too. So Will yeah. Smith, for me, I was a little nervous leaving him out there. Yeah. It was him or Fickle. So I had two guys that I could that I could, uh, they could go there. So I have a couple D linemen now. I'm still not ready to attack tight end because Ohio State, all the success they've put out over the years, the tight end stuff is just not – not fun for you know it's just not it's not something i'm gonna rush to do so Rick, ricky dudley or bust it's kind of it man <laughs> I, um, know. I know yeah and i'm not forcing some other spots but i am gonna go back and i'm gonna go ahead and take a receiver and i'm gonna take another guy in the top five coolest of the 90s and that's uh, that's our boy terry glenn in 1995 great r.i.p great choice and um a guy who man if you put terry glenn in modern nfl like who is terry glenn in the modern nfl i mean a guy who just who was i mean is he cd lamb like he's just gonna run away from you he's gonna create That's separation great... like that guy was so good and you're talking about these guys like it took jackson smith CD and Jigba 1606 yards to break the single yeah. season david boston terry glenn run so i'm stacking the 90s guys who just didn't get there they're due, man. Like they just didn't yeah. get the long term run, right? So there's another guy at the turn of the century that probably is uh, a little underrated there. But but there's uh, man, those two in the '90s were, and like again, you put those guys in the modern NFL and can't hold them, can't grab them. You know, whew, been tough yeah. to cover those two guys. Yeah. So yeah, I'm feeling good about the wide receiver room and got a flex position left. I got my eye on somebody. So so you I, so uh, you took you took Terry Glenn and who else? David Boston. Okay. All right. And then the other pick from this round was Will Smith. Smith. Yep. So yeah. Will Smith, really quick update on his son. He's had a fantastic spring. Loved to um, yes, yeah. Last last year he came in, he couldn't stay healthy. Um, was dealing with some things, but he's got he's got the size put on him. Um, Larry Johnson's been speaking very highly of him. You know, and so hopefully he can able he's able to crack the two deep and and get into the rotation. But I I know they that they feel really good about his development and where he's at. So. Shout out to Will Smith Jr., man. We we're we are rooting for you big time. Yes. It's always just so cool when the legacy names, man. Like that's what would have been cool about Winfield's son being out there. It's like, oh, the jersey, the name, all yes. that, man. That that stuff is uh that stuff's really cool. So hopefully yeah. that that pans out, man. All right. Well, you know, much like you guys said, tight end, not in a real hurry to get there. 
I've got like five guys on my quarterback list still that you guys have let fall to me. So I'm crazy comfortable there. Um, so we're going to go linebacker. And I want my linebackers to just fly. So I don't think anybody epitomizes that more than Ryan Shazier. Nope. And we, we will go with Ryan Shazier. Good call. Great call. Good call. Good call. Okay, well, you just took another one of my picks. So let's circle back. Okay, so let's see. What do I need? Defensive back-wise, got Antoine Winfield. I still have not drafted a receiver yet. I feel feel good about this. feel good about where I am. So Mar- Marshawn's been taken. All right. So the next, I'm going to take another corner. Okay. Now, this guy hasn't had the best NFL career. All right. But you know what? Scratch it. I just had a change of heart. Because we have Jake Burns on here. There we go. I am going to take Denzel Ward. You Denzel got Ward. You back there? Yeah. Denzel Ward, to me, obviously you're seeing the success he's having at NFL level if he can stay healthy. I just don't think people understand how tough it was to play in Greg Schiano's defense. They played cover one and two man every freaking play. Yeah. And so to just be able to line up and play that level of man coverage at such a high level, shout out to Denzel Ward. That's going to be my second quarterback taken. All right. And then man, do I take a receiver yet? Do I take a receiver? Do I just keep ignoring the best premium <laughs> position in football right now? Do I take a receiver? There's I do so not. many good ones to still take. I mean, I assume you're throw. planning on running the option with Braxton. I mean, yeah, yeah. you point. know, Braxton might just be a package player for me, though. You know, like I've got a we're going to get very uh, creative with how we use him. All right. So we also probably should have drafted coordinators because like, you know, if you're talking about, um, you know, so, you know, the wrong, if you get the wrong offensive coordinator with these guys, a package deal. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just saying. Okay. All right. That's a good point. That's a good point. So Braxton is, he's my, he's, he's going to stick with my quarterback. But I, I, you need to, right? You need to, right? With Braxton, his health injuries, his concerns, like we, we got to go with another guy. So, be with Jim Bowman before you know it. I know. <laughs> do I pull the trigger on this guy? I do. All right, I've got to. All right, CJ Stroud, got to take him. Yeah, got to take yeah. him. Got to take him. Got to take. You him. got you got the top the top end quarterbacks are. You know, the second quarterback can be a little bit a little bit loose, right? You can yeah, you know, he can be a different trait set, right? But uh yep. yeah, man. CJ was unbelievable. All right. Pains me not to uh, say Joe Germain. Pains me not to say Joe Germain. I if you know me, you know what quarterback I'm not taking in this draft. <laughs> um I'm gonna go ahead and finish the linebacker room off. Um, you know, I said I wanted speed. And we're going to stick with that. I, I really want to take my boy Bobby Carpenter. I, I really do. But if we're really going to let these guys fly around to the ball, I am going to take Jerome Baker. To Great pick. With Ryan Shazier. I would have signed him this offseason. Yeah. Oh, I would have loved that. And to think he still had two years left with us. Yep. Benedictine kid, right? Yep. Yep. Great player, special talent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is uh, very good, man. Um, all right, yeah, a lot of good choices. Quarterback still. Um, yeah, I'll be interested to see which ones we leave on the board. I have to get a running back. I don't have one yet. I guess I should take one. Gosh, man, least valuable position in sports, whatever. Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's it's probably. It just I just have to take JK at this point. Yeah, JK all day. You know, he had the the impossible task of replacing Zeke and then before that Carlos Hyde. So you're like, th- there's no way this freshman could be as good as what we're taking. No, he's he's pretty good. He had a great he's career, pretty good. Man. I think that year, career. I think that year, the two thousand yard year is what's contributing to him not being able to stay healthy. 
No doubt. We kind of ran, we ran yeah. him into the ground. They sure did, man. It was hard not to because he's so special. <laughs> no, man. He's, he's so, so freaking good. good. So we have the, uh, you know, obviously we can't take uh, Archie in this one. We can't take Tim Spencer in this one, but you're talking about like running backs left are pretty slim. So um, do you guys both have two running backs now? I only I have do. one. Oh, man. Uh, then I guess I'm going to take my second back um, and just take Carlos Hyde. Oh, wow. So I have two back. Because after that, I, I just like, eh, the running back is. So I'm taking Dobbins and Hyde. Listen, man, when Hyde was at his peak at Ohio State, I know he gets he like the, pretty good. the NFL experience. He was wasn't good. It? That guy he was, was like, hey, let's just run inside zone, tight zone. Let's just give it to him, and we're going to get five yards. Like every yep. the rush efficiency of that guy – at Ohio State was was some really special stuff, and and, and obviously he gets overshadowed because of the guys that came like immediately after him were so good, right? Yeah. You know, so that that gets left a little bit, but yeah, man, like th- that that true like tight read stuff with him and Braxton was, you know, coming off of twenty eleven. Pretty good. Like, Do we deserve this? Because this is unbelievable right now. Man. Yeah, these guys paired up together. So yeah, I'll go that pretty route. Knockout running back. I'm All I'm right. a little shocked. I'm a little shocked you went with him over uh with the I know who's sitting there. Uh, I, uh, I I I prefer his style to Beanie. There's also another one sitting there from the mid '90s uh-huh. that was yeah that was really up for me. But I I just uh I think he was up to yeah, be yeah. one of the coaches at Ohio mm-hmm. State. Mm-hmm. Uh, this oh, year. that one's there too. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I'm gonna mm-hmm. go ahead and finish the receiver room. We've got Marv. We've got Ted. We got two big bodied guys, you know, but then you've got Ted who is obviously fast as can be. So you need somebody to give you some versatility, somebody you can run in the slot, somebody you can run outside. Um, I can't take Anthony Gonzalez because, well, he's Anthony Gonzalez (laughs) and uh, he's probably my least ever favorite interaction with a Buckeye ever. I got um, this could be a Dane Sansenbacher spot, but I think I'm going to go with Mr. Reliable and go with Chris Olave to finish off the wide receiver room. Yeah, from from a, from his freshman year, man. Like, did my wife actually send you this? Because like, like you uh, you are lit, like I I write the guys' names down and then they just get taken. Like, what? The so heck? actually, I have a camera. And the the Browns guy over your shoulder. Uh, yeah, he zoomed in. Hey, yeah. that's Eric Metcalf, by the way. It looks. Oh yeah, it is Metcalf. Yeah, it was from my birthday in 1992. Love that. So, so good yeah, luck good guarding point. my receivers. Wow. Okay. So you just took, you just took Olave. Okay. So. Back to me. I need to round out my secondary. Okay. So the guy for me, I think, really set the bar. Well, really helped elevate the safety room. There's a part of me that wants to go with Christian Bryant right here. There really is a part of me because undersized guy, big hitter, really set the tone for the defense. But with Antoine Winfield, I don't think I need that type of guy. So I'm going to go with Malik Hooker right here at safety. He's going to be my post safety, and we're going to play a lot of cover one on the outside, and we're just going to let him roam. And I think that's what he is really good at. So mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Malik Hooker to to round out my secondary. So I got Antoine Winfield, Denzel Ward, and Malik Hooker. I'll, I'll take that. I'll take yeah. that. Uh, what and positions? Then, what positions are you guys done with? I am uh, done I with quarterback, running back, O line, D line, and now defensive back. Okay. I am done with receiver, O line, D line, and linebacker. Okay, so we don't all have a common cross because I, I, I want to see who we end up leaving off. That's what I want to end up looking at when we get there. Gotcha. So. I have not picked a receiver yet, so kudos to you. Yeah, and I'm all not right. going to right now all right where you go next all right so we're gonna go man this is a tough one this is a tough one because you took jay's ear premium position do i go receiver no we're not we're gonna stick on the defensive side of the ball all right 
I want to get another guy who's going to have some long hair out of the helmet, who's going to have a visor on, who's going to be an underrated athlete that can go down and rush the passer a little bit as well. I'm going to go with my guy, Bobby Carpenter. Excellent pick. Just an absolute maniac of a human being back in those days, too. <laughs> yeah. And I still uh, think from the way he talks, that man can drink today. Yeah. Oh, God, that whole family. I have a buddy who was uh, – Urbana Baseball was was the uh, in charge of uh, helping security during those big, big-time Carpenter AJ days and Schlegs. And uh, oh, yeah. he said that he was looking back in the tunnel right before the Texas game, and it was Bobby and AJ's doing one-arm pull-ups. Full helmet, full everything, just doing one-arm pull-ups yeah. before they come out onto the field. Like, those guys were just different DNA, man. Dude, Urbana, we literally did security for every event Ohio State yeah. ever did. It yeah. was always... Did you know Terry Holbert by chance? Does that yes, name... I knew Terry. Yeah. yeah, Terry played with me at Muskingum. He was a, he transferred over there I, like quarterback. I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, I know Terry. Yeah, that's, that's that story crazy. comes from. Yeah, yeah, it's ironic. We've never, we've never, I don't know why we've never crossed over on that name before. Yeah, he's having yeah, a nice Terry little was... run as a head coach down there. Yeah, he's a, yeah. he's a he's a he's a he's a good guy. We did good security people. for Buckeye games. We did um, rock on the range. Like, just yeah, literally insane. Someone stuff. had a rock. great connection there at the university. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. yeah. Yeah, we randomly had Jim Trestle come speak to the school one week, like because Coach Murgatroyd was his guy. Coach Murgatroyd, shout out to Coach Mergs, forced to resign as head coach. Two weeks later, he's on the sideline against Florida for the Buckeyes <laughs> in the national championship game. Yeah, that's I'll never. Know. That's when you know you got the right people around. You know, you, yeah, you've made the right friendships. Yeah, that's great. All right, running. I need another running back. So. It's an interesting. There's two good ones sitting there. Th there's an interesting pool, you know. With having Eddie, you've got that bruiser that can can break one though. Still has deceptive speed. Um, you know, you got Beanie Bruiser, Antonio Pittman Bruiser. Um, you know, this is where you might see the first current guy go. You could almost go with Travion as kind of a thunder and lightning to Eddie. But I think I'm going to dip back in the past, and I'm going to go with Michael Wiley. That was a guy I thought we would leave off because yeah. there's some couple there. But yeah, that's a man, Michael Wiley. That number five, he, he, another fun. like just the '90s Buckeyes were cool as hell. Like they were just they, were. they looked the, the, the part. champion jerseys. The yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to yeah. Son Jackson. He's on the uh, he's on the football team at Olentangy. Receiver. Nice. It's pretty. It's pretty good. His dad showed up to our first parents meeting and I like totally fanned out. So of course it was like, what it was like, to do? Yeah, I, I was like, I'm the sorry, new man. guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's man. Like, dude, yeah. I know you get this a lot, but I'm yeah. not going to stop myself. Yeah. <laughs> Can you sign this napkin, please? <laughs> this napkin. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. It's got a little pizza grease on it, but it'll yeah. make it work. It'll make it work. Uh, so we leave off a running backs done for everybody. So we leave off Pepe Pearson. Yep. Just an all-time name. It's alliteration heaven name. Former <laughs> Marion <laughs> Mayhem head coach. That's right. Yep. And we left off Beanie. That's yep. how it goes, man. Tough times. To, you know, tough tough positions to pick. Running well, back to Ohio know, State. We've got wild cards left, so you we never do. know. We do have. We so do those have are our two best available running backs, right, sitting there that are uh, to be selecting Travion, too, of the of the current group. Um, all right, is it me again? Yeah, it's it me is. again. Um, yeah. So I haven't picked – a third offensive lineman, and this is one that gets lost again because his NFL career didn't go the way everybody thought it would. Billy Price, like Billy Price, is pretty good. I mean, he was a two-time so All-American and consensus All-American in seventeen. Yep. So, or sorry, unanimous All-American was even more important. So, um, yeah, I'll go. I'll go with Billy Price since we're ignoring the NFL. It just didn't. It just didn't work out for him, man. But um, that gives me. Um, if I could put him in the right category, we have Rob Murphy, Billy Price, and Dewan Jones. We got a center, a guard, and a tackle. Not the most elite group here, but steady. steady. Steady group. We can run the football behind those guys. I need another receiver. I need another quarterback. And I need another defensive lineman. And I need a tight end. Um, okay. So I, I think that I'm going to go and get another quarterback. And this is just... You know, guys, it's at this point we have to have two of them, and it's a personal crush. I mean, a cool factor here. There was not a cooler 
Ohio State quarterback than Troy Smith. There just wasn't. There just there wasn't, really wasn't a cooler quarterback the way he looked, the visor, yeah. the short sleeves, the everything about that dude. I tried to copy his look. Yeah. Every year I was playing football, I was like, I want yeah, to look cool. like that dude, man. The 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 yeah. Vic cleats and the, the, and the way he ran cleats. out for the senior year, the scene, you know, that Michigan game, like Troy Smith. Great legend. Take Absolute it. legend. You're off the board, Troy Smith. There we go. All right. Um, so is that that's two for me, Billy and Troy. So I am I'm close to completion uh, other than my utility uh selection. All right. Well, I am going to finally take a quarterback. You know, we're we're slinging the rock around. <laughs> and there's there's nobody else better to sling the rock around. You know, 50 touchdowns in a season. R.I.P. Simba, Dwayne yeah. Haskins. Mm-hmm. God, that year was so special for him. Yeah, absolutely. Just nonstop KJ Hill, currently like crossing yes. route city. They They're just killed people on mesh. Killed people with like that. If there was a single season mesh record, that was the year. <laughs> it was I mean, that year. Yes. Watching Michigan not be year. able to figure it out, like yeah. God, man, they were they were a machine. They couldn't KJ figure Hill out that yesterday either. KJ KJ Hill, underrated receiver in Buckeye history. Yes. He's uh, yeah, just. Always caught the ball. Special. That's that, that's one of the the things I want to do when we wrap up is like, which ones do we leave off? Who deserves the shout out that didn't yeah. honorable mentions? He's in that group. I, not to say he could still be picked. He could still be he picked. could still be picked because I have not picked a receiver yet. So if there are God, some good can, ones out there. I got one remaining two, and I got my eye on one. I can't wait to see who you pick. All right, so I got two back to back picks. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna knock out two receivers right now. The first receiver. We need somebody with our running game. We're going to ground and pound, but we need somebody that can take the top off the defense. And I don't know if there was anybody better than Devin Smith at doing that. And so special ball tracker. Yes. At Ohio State. So we're, we're, we're going to go. My first receiver off the board is going to be Devin Smith. I thought he might get left off. That was a guy I thought we could For overlook sure. a little bit. Um, yeah, but we gotta God, have we yeah. gotta have that deep threat, you know. We gotta have that deep. That's threat. another like if you name some of these guys that you thought like Billy Price is another one. Like this guy's gonna go to the NFL. It's just gonna be really good. Like there's yeah. just no path that like I thought Devin Smith is like it's fine. He's gonna have like 800 yards a year. He's gonna do. He's gonna recreate what Ted did. He's just gonna yeah. be a vertical guy that yep. can try. And it just the injuries and stuff just it just crushed him. But he was God, man. That like think that Big Ten title game with Wisconsin. Like that guy could track unreal. The so unreal. Well. And then to see him do it against the SEC when he did it against Alabama. And like yeah. people were so concerned, like, oh, we're not gonna, he's not gonna be able to do that. And, and he still went out and did it. Like that was awesome to see. All right. My second receiver I'm gonna take, you know, Mr. Reliable. He just changed his number back to five with the Jets. Um, I think Garrett Wilson and what he brought, I think I know zone six is, was a big deal before he got there, but I think he helped elevate zone six to another level. Um, so we're going to go with Garrett Wilson as my, as my second receiver. All right. I dig. It's a great choice. Uh, keeping my nostalgia team alive is why I'm excited, but yeah, <laughs> so, that, he's great. It's question gonna... for the room. Ohio state playing career only or other schools as well. Ohio state only. Yeah, we can't, we can't, that's to, to pushing it too far. You can't go that look, far. Look, I need a backup quarterback. <laughs> I'm just saying. McCord hasn't played yet. He'll be fine. Yeah. He'll, he'll You're fine. Out. He's fine. You're fine. He's still good. You know, but you between Kyle fine. McCord and, and Stanley Jackson, I don't know which one I'm taking first. But right. um, I, I'm going to go take my backup quarterback. Since I can't take Joey B, <laughs> um, you know, we're, we're slinging the rock. Who better to sling the rock than the guy that slung the rock to Devin Smith all over Alabama? We're, we're going to take Cardell to back up Dwayne. I mean, Old the Dolo. two biggest arms. I mean, all hail King Dolodale. I mean, 12 gauge. I thought that, for sure you were going to go with Terrell Pryor. It was, I wanted to. I, I really, really did. did. I really did. But I thought for I, I sure you the, would. The, you know, the two big arm guys that away, you know, to go back to Jake's point earlier about the right coordinator, 
you don't have a whole lot of drop off, you know, in the style of what we can do if we have to go to the backup when uh, NCAA comes out. That's right. That's that's cool. Terrell with Urban would have been unbelievable. Oh my god, he would have won a Heisman. Yeah, dude, another NIL god. That guy would have had a million five, two million walking in the door. Just like he would have been. That's that's. Oh, dude, think about I, that's one of the few guys where I like. I actually think, guys, that's the first one I can remember where I was when an Ohio State commitment was announced. Yeah. Like, like this guy was. I mean, there are people following him, and like, I just remember like going to a computer lab, my my freshman dorm, and like watching <laughs> that happen live. The like, University you, of you, Ohio you, State. You remember it, man? Yeah, the, the, that <laughs> whole debacle happened, and probably an omen for the few but that's how it was it was before you had like i had a laptop but that thing was like was slow it was slow man i needed the connection to the wall i can't have a delay in this video in my my dorm room here i gotta know where this guy's going is he going to michigan i need the hard wiring oh yeah, my man. god that was that was it i did vividly and that was like 2008 right 2007 2008 it's probably 2007 when he committed uh, yeah. i know that he, he he no actually no it would have been seven nine would've been ten would no, yeah. it would have been eight, right? Yeah, yeah. 2008. Eight. Because, yeah, he didn't commit on signing day. He pushed right. it out a little bit. So, yeah, that was that was it, man. <laughs> the computer lab. What Do a dangerous remember? place to be. Oh, oh I remember. AJ oh, Huddle, God. refresh. Yeah. Oh, uh, what, a, what a dangerous place to be. You never knew what you are going to walk in and see. Dude, no. there could be kids flinging chips off the wall on that thing, man. <laughs> I, I'm just trying to write my paper, dude. Can you shut up? Like, Yeah. We had to share computer labs back in the day. That's yeah. that's wild to think about. But are we done with quarterback now? Everybody have two. Quarterback really have is two? off the board. I've got I've got two. Wow, Bobby Hoying didn't get picked. So no Bobby Hoying. No Joe Germain. No, no JT TV. Barrett. No John J Ratliff is going to have our asses for JT yeah. Barrett not getting drafted. Listen, if it was back and forth for me between him and Braxton. Uh, I just, but I, Brax is my favorite Buckeye of all time. Like there's not, I wanted to do like a, an accomplishment cue and a cue I think was the best one there. So that's yeah. sorry, JT. I thought Troy's Heisman overweighs your longevity, brother, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Um, good stuff. Or who's, whose pick is it now? Is it, it's not mine. Is it? No, it is. You just picked the quarterback. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me. I think I have two spots left before utility. So I have one receiver spot and then I have a D line spot. Okay. Uh, receiver though. I'm going to cap off the all uh, nostalgia team and go Santonio San Holmes because Santonio San man. Ah. Again, we're talking about coolest guys ever. He looked the part. He did, man. And he could he play did. right away. Another Florida guy who came up to Ohio state and was, the uh, Grande. boy, was he really good, man? He was pretty um, good. It's pretty good pretty good i enjoyed watching it's just a, you know you the highlight stuff with ted ginn overshadows it but and then you're talking about a guy winning the nfl and did some really magical stuff won a super bowl for his team and all that so that plays into it all right um defensive line gentlemen is my last selection before utility and tight end so tight end and utility i'm saving because i think we're kind of open there i want to get my last d lineman and I'm going to go a little off the beaten path another guy who significantly disappointed in the nfl but was a again really scary dude when you saw him lined up that's uh, that's um a vernon golston is who i'm gonna go with. oh my gosh dude his so, arms were as big as my head he was yeah. another guy who i'm like this dude is not gonna fail in the nfl and there's like, no hey. way yeah there's, he was yeah. special special player so i'm gonna take vernon i understand i didn't attack a defensive tackle but i just can't you know we're just gonna get real weird we're gonna do some like some three three stuff, man. We're gonna do some tight. For, we're gonna get real weird. Yeah, okay? man. Like, let's get weird yeah. with this with this group. Will Smith can be our heavy, our heavier body. Yeah, we'll bump him inside, get him moving around a little bit. But yeah, that's that's the route. Listen, to, uh, could you imagine Vernon Golson as a four eye? Oh my god! Like, dude. <laughs> you, there's no way. There's no way you're stopping that. B gap no. is is one. Like you're just yeah, not. you're not running that way. Just no. stop thinking that. Yeah. 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 I'm into it. All right, so I've got a pretty set group, man. I'm pumped to, right. to do my last two picks. I, I got a tight end. I got my eye on, boys. So I have on. a DB spot left, Ooh. and I am going to take the first current player to be drafted. I need a safety, and 
you know, Von Bell, I got nothing but love for you. You're probably the best one out there left from the past, you and Dante. But uh, I need Caleb Downs on this team. <laughs> I knew you were going to – oh, man. He hadn't even played a down yet. He wants an but, autograph. He's going to get that frame photo. I'm telling you right listen, now. Look, you know, the last picks are always about potential. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will I will say this, man. Watching him in the spring game – and to see the command of the defense that he had and how smooth he is back there, he's able to play the post safety. He's able to roll down into the box. He's not afraid of contact. Like, dude, that I'm I'm excited to see him play. He's just, he's, and, he's and he fits my mold of I just want guys flying around. I mean, I got yeah. a back end of Shazier, Jerome Baker, Springs, Lattimore, and Caleb Downs. Like, yeah. come on, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. A bunch it's of movers good. in there, man. Caleb Downs has got a little Bob Sanders in him, too. That's what I like about him. Are we done with secondary now? I think I agree with that. Secondary is good... done. So, no Jeff Okuda, no Damon Moore, Will no Sm Donnie uh, Nicky, Will Bradley Allen, Roby. Will Allen. Will Allen was a close one for me. Dante Hittner. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's got a, he yeah. obviously somehow hates Cleveland now, which is kind of an interesting. Yeah, thing, that's wild. Interesting development for his personal brand. Kurt Coleman. Yeah, Kurt Coleman, uh, guy I texted you about her uh, last week, Chimdi Chekwa. <laughs> Chekwa is so underrated, man. So underrated, so underrated. Yeah, he knows Bradley, like Bradley, you... Bradley Roby. Yeah, Von Bell. yeah, Brad, Bradley Roby was special. Yeah, I thought he was pretty good. He kind of started Chimdi that Chekwa whole too. like Brian Browning. They Roby got a pretty decent that podcast. Whole, like D DBs coming in with swagger. You yeah, know, yeah. you went like Roby Arnett to IGB. Like guys who are gonna bark at you, but they're gonna back it up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. All right, back to me. So I need another receiver. I need a tight end, and I still need flex. So, all right. So I got my two outside receivers. I feel pretty good about those guys, Devin Smith and and Garrett Wilson. All right, I need somebody that can attack. You know, between the hashes and the slot. You know, I think. Wish he would have been able to stay healthy as last year with the Buckeyes, but I gotta go with JSN, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. That dude, that that sixteen hundred yard year was pretty special. I think he's a very smooth route runner. Um, I just I hope it works out for him in Seattle, but that was a guy I was a big fan of. I don't know how much of a fan he was at school, but that dude could play. He could play some ball, man. Yeah, I, I think he's a guy people should be buying up. If you're a dynasty fantasy person, man, like yeah, I I see it. You could see it last year. It clicked for him. Yeah, you know, yep. I'm I'm all in still. I'm with you. And that that dude could special season with special players around. You always go to those guys who they get the market share when they're playing with like, oh, you played with Garrett Wilson and Olave, and you had that kind of season. You you probably matter. Coaches try to get the football to guys who matter. So that's always yeah. a good thing. I'm with you. Yeah, great, great player. And then for my for my flex pick, so my any pick, my tight end is going to be my last pick. So for my any pick, this guy, Mr. Versatile, Curtis Samuel, that dude, special, special. No, that's got to be my last pick. Dang it, I can't. I got to go tight end, right? Shoot. Just shot I don't know. I, you already kind of said the name. I don't know. I know. It's all right. No, it's we'll all right. Okay. I got to go we tight wasn't end. I won't Curtis take Curtis. Samuel. I wasn't either. So he's, you can okay. make both of them. Just make both all of them. Right. You're fine. To take so, your tight end too. All right, so we'll 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 go Curtis Samuel, okay, and then we'll go with a guy that I thought was a little underutilized. I want to go Ricky Dudley here, but I'm not going to. All right, I'm going to go Jeremy Ruckert. Yeah, right. Ruck had. A, I think he, he didn't quite meet what his recruit rankings were. Yeah, for the expectations, but he was a damn. He could, he became a nice multifaceted tight end by the time. Yeah, he, he did. Was done there. He did. And if the Jets keep getting receivers, he should start getting you know mm -hmm. some looks. Well, I'm gonna go with my tight end as well. And I just remember this dude from like NCAA Game Breaker '95, <laughs> running <laughs> running the seam route straight up. Game the Breaker, wow! And we are taking Darnell Sanders. I like mismatches, and that dude is a freak. Yeah. Okay. All right. I love it. I love it. Good pick, man. Good pick. Um. Well, I wanted to make a Ryan Hamby joke that probably wouldn't land so well. Yeah. Um, I pr I probably would have gone stone burner if you guys had taken some guys that were out in front, but I have to take Dudley now. We can't laugh. You have to. I didn't grouping without 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 Dudley. Rick and Dudley. 
yeah. So I'll take Dudley, first rounder. Nice, nice run in the NFL too. Um, and then utility. I don't know if I'm ready to make a utility. Does it utility by like what he can do, or is it just you could pick any random guy that got you left pick off? In any position? random guy that you feel like. Okay. But it's hard to pass on Nuge. I feel like Nuge has one of the most unbreakable records in Ohio State history. Yeah. Um, okay. So can pick anyone. I want to try to be a little off the beaten path here. Um, somebody I haven't heard his name come up yet and was just an integral part of one of the most important seasons in Ohio State history. And that's Matt Wilhelm. Matt I'm going to Wilhelm. take Matt Wilhelm. Great um, voice. Pick. Great, great pick. Just like the Buckeye through and through types, man. That's what that's what I think Matt Wilhelm was. So uh, that's my utility guy. Leadership, leadership, and uh, you know, hell, football player. Great. Well, pick. and following that mold, I might even be going more off the beaten path. Um, you know, I, I've got a loaded wide receiver group of dudes that can catch the ball and burn the defense. But you got to have that dude that's not afraid to get dirty and block and block and block. Mm -hmm. and, and this guy epitomizes, you know, what a lot of us feel to be a Buckeye. I'm going to take Evan Spencer. Great pick. Great pick. Great pick. You know, as, as much as, you know, there's still names out there, you know, Niall Diggs. Um, you know, Nobody did mention Niall like, Diggs. Hold on. John I Simon. I've got to change my pick. I've got. I can't take Curtis Samuel. I can't take him. You're almost making the utility spot is like just a buck I loved, right? It's almost yeah. like just a, a a guy you had a sweet spot for. I can't. I can't. I can't take him. I, I'm so mad at myself that I didn't even think of this guy. Oh, my apologies God. to Curtis's family and friends. I, for, yeah, I know it's this. gonna. Yeah, it's going. It's. I'm disappointed in my in myself. I feel as a Buckeye fan. This is uh this was a guy I gotta go with the defense. My my last pick has to be a defensive guy. It's gotta be. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with Nate Clements. Good pick. Mm, good. I, I thought you were about to Pete Warner. Yeah. No, I dude, I wanted to. That's my guy. But I how could I forget Nate Clements? How? How did I forget him? Underrated DB. Nobody really talks about how great he was. For us, first round pick for the Bills, I believe. Yeah, I think it was a top twenty five pick. Yeah, yep. a pretty solid NFL career. So yeah, Nate Clements. He's gonna be my. He's gonna be my any player. God, my team's stacked, guys. I'm sorry. I think we all three feel pretty good about these groups, man. I think we all had a like a uh, you know a plan, and I think get, you know. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. To get into the weeds, you probably needed to be like a five man team, uh, yeah. draft, but that gets a little heavy too. So. Um, there were some guys that I, I was really bummed that 95 was a, like Joey Galloway was a 94 final season stringer yeah. as far as offensive line was a 94 finish. Um, anybody else we left off you guys can think of as we kind of screw KJ Hill. We talked about, we left off Michael Jenkins. Yep. Gonzo, um, Dane Sansenbacher, Beanie. Uh, we left off Okuda. Um, we left off Michael Bennett. Receiver. Jack we Mewhart, off. Oh, like, Mike Jenkins. I mean, yeah. yeah, Paris Campbell left off. Tough, tough I draft. Mean, he he yeah. didn't have the greatest Ohio State career, but Michael Thomas. I mean, like, there's yeah, that's who I meant to say, Mike Mike Thomas. My bad. Yeah, yeah. Raekwon McMillan. Yeah, Raekwon. Can't believe I didn't draft Raekwon. Yeah, what the heck, Steve Belisari, um, <laughs> yeah. Stanley Jackson. I will say Steve Bell, sorry, top 10 all time Ohio State uh, career offense yards. So I'm probably doing him a disservice with that one. Uh, you know, after an, an interaction, Listen, I my had dad him, hated him. Dude, after seeing the way he defended himself when some dude was talking mess in the bathroom with a horseshoe, <laughs> I will always have Steve Bell, sorry's back now. So, I think we should have done a top five who did your dad hate the most at Ohio yeah. State because I could go yeah. through. <laughs> Some guys, man. Yeah. Did my dad just like that? Dad, stop saying that guy's name. You got to yeah. stop. Yeah, yeah. Belisari Steve, caught a lot of hate. Steve, Steve Belisari caught he he caught a lot of shrapnel from yeah <laughs> from like, uh, from my dad. Beckman and, caught a lot of unnecessary hate that second season. Yeah, yeah. You know another receiver we left off, Brian Hartline. He did Rabisky? Yeah, another one. Rubisky. Yeah, yeah. 
I Dude, mean, I remember when the Browns drafted Rabisky and Muhammad Massaqua, and I thought, yeah. I we're thought done. we're good. We're going to be good for the next 10 years. Don't even talk to me about receivers. We're done. We got yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Me too, man. The long line of Browns draft failures. Uh, they, yeah. the la- largely though, the Browns have avoided. This is something I've been really happy with the last six years is they haven't avoided the, the, the fellows down the highway there. Like they've done a better job of not make like overthinking that stuff, man, where those guys are right, right there, the premium university and, you know, have made it happen with a good number of those guys. So that's an encouraging thing, man. Corey Coleman over Michael Thomas. Yeah. Yeah, man. Let's not get yeah. into that. Yeah. That's, yeah. A long, that's, a, that's a different pod in itself. Right yeah. there. No doubt. That that may be a good one to, to go down a rabbit hole sometime. You yeah. Looking at Buckeyes, the Browns passed on and that – that's scary because you know that's when the Bengals started being good is when they started you know dabbling around. I mean, mm-hmm. even though it didn't work out for him, Michael Jordan, Sam Hubbard, yeah, you know, another and, guy we left off. Yeah, so definitely a, a ton of fun though. I'll uh, once we get the episode posted, I'll post everybody's rosters and I'm gonna make it a poll or something so everybody can vote on them and see you know who they think would be the best. Ahmed uh, Plummer. We left off Ahmed Plummer. Wow. Good throwback there. God. First round pick, 49ers. Yeah. yeah, he was pretty good. This is the thing he about a university with this much good football. Yeah. In just the past 30 years, it's like kind of it's kind of silly. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, yeah. Players John si- John Simon's another one. I was I was pretty shocked. Yes. I know we mentioned him already. That one I, that I, I like him a lot, me. though. I'm just kind of scrolling uh, through like all time record book and looking like, oh, we left that guy. Off. Oh, we left him off. You know what I mean? Yeah. For was Finkus sure. a '95 guy? Did it was Finkus done in '94? Finkus was there. Yeah, Finkus, Finkus was, was a '95 guy. Yeah, he was Man, on the opposite. Still, he, he was on the opposite side of variable. He yeah, still owes a, me a dollar from when Braxton got hurt. He took the Twitter, acting like it wasn't that big of a deal, and a little birdie had already told me how bad of a deal it was, and I said. I'll bet you if I had a thousand dollars to bet you, I would bet you. He goes, Well, I would take it. I said, Well, I'll bet you a dollar then. And then Braxton gets ruled out for the year. And, yeah. So uh, we all man. we all know Mike Nugent, career leader, field goals made. Who's second all time? Would have been eligible to be selected here. Guesses? Oh, uh, buddy. I don't know. I have no idea. Dan Stoltz. Okay. Yes. All right. Late nineties was done in two thousand. Yeah. yeah. What's the run? Yeah, you guys, I got a question for you guys before we go. What's the kid? What's the deal with the kicking situation? Are they okay? What's this Miami Ohio kid available now? What's if going? If you can get the Miami kid, you take him. Like, yeah. Right? Yeah. Mean, he's pretty good. I there. It's out right now though that he's a Bama lean. What's so, the connection there? I don't know. I mean, I know we're Cincinnati's not really Ohio. We we know that we shipped him off to another state, but I just would have figured there'd be some connection. Maybe he didn't grow up like in Ohio State. I don't know. I say it looks yeah. like Nakos from on three says Bama is the clear team to beat, but Ohio State is the other contender. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, yeah, th- that kid's good. I mean, you know, ideally we're not gonna have to kick a field goal all season, but <laughs> right. uh, you know, there's gonna be a point you do so. <laughs> um, and if there's anything we learned, you know, from the the Cade York debacle, you never commit yourself to a kicker. He's That's back. True. He's back. Yeah. I wonder how that about, went. Till about to cut to what seventy five, probably he'll he'll, yeah, he'll yeah. hang around till then. Um, I mean, Nugent's career seventy two field. I don't think that's ever getting touched, man. Like the way no. get fourth down stuff is these Not days. Day. No way. It's like. 572 career tackles for Marcus Merrick. Like that one's never getting touched. No. AJ Hawk didn't even get to 400 and he played pretty much all four years. Right. And plus like all these guys go pro soon now. Yeah. So it's like, it's hard to see these records getting. Some of these are so like Mike Sensabaugh's 22 career interceptions. Like t- teams don't throw interceptions the way they used to. No, like, you know what I mean? Don't. Like there was like an acceptance of, 14 touchdowns, 22 interception type seasons from college cues. Yeah. And it's like, nah, we don't like that anymore. <laughs> and it kind of made me want to keep it on our side. No, nah, I was just meandering off on the time. This is fun, man. This is fun. Yeah, Do you want to read fun. the teams real quick? Yeah, I can bust through them real quick. Uh, cool. So Slater had the first pick. Uh, yep. Braxton Miller and CJ Stroud. And yes, he took them in that order. We won't judge him. Uh, <laughs> Maurice Claret and Ezekiel Elliott at running back. 
Devin Smith, Garrett Wilson, and JSN at receiver. Jeremy Rucker at tight end. Orlando Pace, LaCharles Bentley, Paris Johnson Jr. Um, D-line, Jonathan Hankins, Mike Rabel, Chase Young. That's that's pretty disgusting, honestly. Um, yeah. Andy Katzenmoyer, Bobby Carpenter. And then Antoine Winfield, Denzel Ward, Malik Hooker. And then his wild card was Nate Clements. Um, I went with Dwayne Haskins, Cardell Jones, Eddie George, and Michael Wiley. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., Ted Ginn Jr., and Chris Olave with Evan Spencer as my wild card. When Darnell and Sanders Ted on the field together. <laughs> that's yeah, that's right. pretty. That's sick. Uh, Nick Mangold, Taylor Decker, Thayer Munford as my O line. Joey Boza, Cam Hayward, Luke Fickle, Ryan Shazier, Jerome Baker, Sean Springs, Marshawn Lattimore, and Caleb Downs. And then Jake took Justin Fields and Troy Smith. That's legit. Uh, J.K. Dobbins, Carlos Hyde, David Boston, Terry Glenn, Santonio Holmes, Ricky Dudley, Rob Murphy, Dewan Jones, Billy Price, Nick Boza, Will Smith, Vernon Golston, James Laurinaitis, A.J. Hawk, Matt Wilhelm is his wild card, and then he stole Mike Doss from my heart, um, Chris Gamble, <laughs> and Malcolm Jenkins. You know, how are you going to decide who wears number two between Doss and Jenkins? I mean, that that's a yeah. great I question. Mean, you might have to let them fight, but I think Malcolm might win that. I think Malcolm's a dog, man. Like Mike Doss is, is my second is. favorite Buckeye to Eddie, but Malcolm like just is different. Yeah, I, Malcolm's uh, a guy you want on your side in any like dark alley, man. Like yeah, that dude. Do. Yeah, he, he's, yeah. He's. I mean, as what far I mean, as you... like the alpha of all alphas at Ohio State over the years, he's in the com- conversation, right? Like, I oh mean, yeah, he's in it. But I mean, we've all got our, our, you know, our back alley guy. You know, Jared took Rabel. I've got Fickle. You know, you've got Malcolm. You've got, I mean, you got Vernon Golston. Nobody's messing with you walking with Vernon Golston besides yeah. you. So just don't ask me uh, to speed rush. That's the only yeah. thing we want to ask. Yeah. Me. Uh, so this was a blast. Uh, yeah, this was great, man. You, you know, yeah. we hope you guys enjoy listening to it. It was, and hope it's, you know, half as entertaining for you as it was for us to make. Uh, massive massive thanks to jake for jumping on and doing this with us absolutely uh um, pleasure you know and after the draft you know we'll try to get you back on here talk about the, where the browns got you know what the browns did where the buckeyes landed not that there's a lot of them this year um so yeah we greatly appreciate you hopping on any parting words no hey you guys know i'm uh i'm, I'm happy to be here do this anytime anytime the browns and buckeyes cross paths i'd Love to chat. I just love to talk ball. Slate knows that, man. So yep. happy to happy to meet you, Jeremy, and uh, had a good time. And appreciate yeah. you guys letting me on your show, man. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. It was a blast. Any parting words, Slate? Ah, uh, no. The last thing I want to say: um, shout out to Ryan Montgomery, um, yeah. quarterback, Finley High School. Um, you know, we talk about. I've got three daughters, right? So you always think about the type of person that they're always going to marry, and if if I if my kids marry somebody that's like Ryan, I will be extremely happy. And so to see him have success, and I know the process was long for him, and he's doing, he did what was best for him. He followed his own path. So shout out to Ryan, man, proud of you. Um, I know you're going to do big things down at Georgia, and you're going to have a great senior year. So kudos to Ryan Montgomery, man. Shout out to you. Well, good deal. Looks like uh, just a little bit of portal news, real quick. Peyton Kirkland. Uh, from Texas is going to join Coach Prime in Colorado. Wow! So Shador automatically gets the best O lineman he's ever had. Go, you know, protecting him. Yeah. So that's a big deal. Uh, that's a big deal. That, that that's a big deal. Um. Yeah. So shout out Coach Prime for pulling that off. Uh, I've got nothing. Uh, busy. You know, this past week was crazy. So uh, we'll get this up for you guys and. Uh, Hopefully we get some more Buckeye news coming this week. You know, recruiting dead period. We're in the middle of one of those. Uh, you know, got the portal stuff going on. We'll see. I know there were a lot of discussions going on last week. Coaches, players, you know, I'm sure the collectives are involved. And uh, we'll go from there. Uh, basketball Buckeyes, a little turmoil today. But I think that'll work out and cover that next week, hopefully. Yep. Um, but, yeah, with that said. Longer than normal episode, but entertaining as all can be. Um, So, yeah, with that said, we will see you guys next week.